Good evening. Welcome once again to another episode of What Nobody Told Me After 65. Well, it is your lady on the go, lady in the know, Miss Info. You have reached the information nation where knowledge is shared and wisdom exchanged for the betterment of a people. Good evening. Welcome. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about how to be an effective leader. We've got a huge election coming up. We have quite a bit of uh, information out there on the political platform. This is not about politics. You can be a leader at your house, you can be a leader on a job, you can be a leader in your church. Just how is it that we become a good and effective leader? So what qualities and characteristics or abilities should one possess to be considered a good leader? More importantly, an effective leader. Today, more than ever before, it is important to be able to spot a good leader. Not only one that represents the people, but also on a personal level. If your leader is your husband, hopefully you have chosen wisely. Or if your leader is your supervisor. Qualities and characteristics will weigh heavily on his or her abilities. Suppose your leader is your mother or your father. Well, in that case, you don't have a choice in the matter. But you see where I'm going. A great leaders, great leaders are cultivated. They are not born. No one is born a leader except Jesus Christ. So let's look at some points about being an exceptional leader. Point one, they communicate clearly, especially if you're close to the group of people that you're working with. Communications is essential whether you're writing or you're having a face-to-face -face exchange, good leaders say what they mean and mean what they say. They are not passive or aggressive, nor do they shy away from addressing challenges in a direct manner. You're not afraid to speak up. Point two. They are passionate about what they do. They're not afraid to show it. Not afraid to be passionate about what they represent and who they represent. You can be a good leader even if your professional and your personal interests aren't a perfect match. You don't have to be uh, a good leader as a uh, teacher, which is your profession, and then you can't be a good leader uh, as a mother, which is your personal life. You're a teacher and a mother, and you lead in both arenas, and that's okay. Good leaders don't worry about being popular. In fact, if that's their first concern, whether or not people like you, you have a problem and you'll be less effective. You can't be popular if you have to give criticism, if you have to fire somebody, if you have to uh, discipline someone. Can't be a good leader if you're worried about that. Good leaders keep their minds open that's another characteristic. Remaining receptive to new ideas instead of resisting change. Good leaders are flexible and highly adaptable. 
Good leaders are positive and encouraging. Good leaders are uplifting. They praise people for a job well done, for doing well, no matter where it is, even at home. You praise people for doing a good job. Good leaders are encouraging, positive, and they respect others. Even if they're your peers, whoever they are across the board, you have to show respect for people. Good leaders treat others as they want to be treated. Good leaders build relationships. They have that ability to form a productive, a productive connection and with other people. Good leaders are not threatened by others. They don't have to guard their territory. Why? Because they're comfortable with where they are. They're constantly building bridges with others. Good leaders lead by example. The best leaders know that an essential part of what makes them a good leader is setting the right example, doing the right thing because it is the right thing to do. Good, good leaders show that they're ready and willing to work with others. Good leaders never stop learning. That might be their most important characteristic because they're continually learning. You can always learn something. You're never too old to learn something. I found that out. Overall, what does it mean to be fit to lead? Well, there are just three key pillars to leadership and balanced fitness. They are physical, mental, and ethical. Physical includes strength, stamina, resilience, determination, and perseverance. Mental fitness, it's more than intellect. And it's different from mental health. Mental fitness is more than business. It requires a commitment to creating headspace, headspace, to nurture your mind and fuel your thinking beyond the short-term dopamine rush. Okay, we talked about dopamine. I've been always on leadership. You can't always be on. Your mental fitness requires rest and a balance. And your ethical fitness. That can include creating a values-based culture and to be able to put something out there that will help other people, ethical. To be a force for good. Having a strong moral compass. Those are some pointers on how to be an effective leader. Now, why is this important? Again, we're about to make the biggest decision in this country's history in a couple of months. Be able to do your homework. Be able to make a decision based on facts, not fiction. Well, there you have it. 
Are you a good leader? Do you have what it takes to lead? If not, perhaps you consider being an informed, dependable follower. There is much honor to be found in taking this position as a follower. To thine own self be true. Remember, you don't know <laughs> what you don't know. Thanks for listening.